I'd like to call to order the Clarkston Independence District Library Board of Trustee meeting for July 12th. The meeting I will call to order at 6.32 will rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Sam Gaffney here. Jim Green, Jessica, Allison, Ben Beasley here. Nancy Moon here. Carol Conway here. Ann Rose here. Chris Bell here. Okay. I'll accept the motion for approval of the agenda. I will move to approve the agenda. Moved by Ann, second by Allison. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nays. Motion is approved. Call to the public. Hello, public. Public is here. Evening. Um, we finally have a treasurer. Her name is Missy Huntoon, and we uh, approved her on uh, our last meeting. Our online reading uh, market is going very well. Since in June, we had $200 worth of sales and $24 in donation. And since December, we have sold 791 books. Um, <laughs> July 21st will be our next donation collection. That will be from 10 to 2 and 6 to 8 on July 21st. And we are actually planning a regular book sale on September 21st. Right here in this room. Thank you. Thank you to the Friends of the Library. Yay. At least we will enjoy the sound of frivolity on the lawn. <laughs> they do sound like they're having fun out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll accept the motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. It's moved and seconded to. Accept the consent agenda. There are five items. Does anyone wish to question any one of them? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oppose, nay. Motion is approved. Statistics. Okay, I have some statistics for you tonight. Um, the traffic statistics are uh, one, the spreadsheet with the colorful. Um, headings on it. Uh, just a few things that I wanted to point out that I thought you might find of interest. Um, in June of 2020, the library was closed. Um, so, of course, comparing June to um, last year would be somewhat pointless. Um, but from, compared to June of 2019, um, the visitors are down about 48%. But then again, we do still have people who um, are maybe not coming in quite yet. Uh, so we're hoping that those numbers will go up. Um, if you look at total circulations, um, total circulations are up 524% over last year, <laughs> when we were only doing curbside in June. Um, but then circulations are down, only down about 13% as compared to 2019. So we are seeing circulation rebounding. Um, another interesting one is our information questions. Um, information questions are up 494% from last year. <laughs> um, and they're actually up 12% from 2019, which is really nice. I think people found us over the course of COVID and now we're getting um, more calls than we were getting previously. Uh, one statistic that has um, interestingly gone interestingly gone down is downloads. Downloads are down 7% from last year. But then, of course, downloads would have been everybody's primary last year. Um, but they are still up 8% from 2019. So 
So this is an interesting story. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, we are able to do a little bit of comparative work. Excellent. Any questions? Okay, let's have our director's report. Okay. Uh, so the summer reading program is off to a great start. We now have 673 children and teens registered to participate this summer. This is a significant increase over last summer. Uh, the teen program alone has seen an increase of 29% over last year. Um, as the library board discussed at the June 14th meeting, uh, a subcommittee will be investigating possible options regarding the library's sign policy. The committee, which is made up of the head of circulation, Chris Nado, uh, Library Board Trustee Allison McFadden Kiesling and myself met last week for an initial conversation. Various action steps were listed, including reaching out to other libraries that were fine free for at least several months prior to COVID in order to inquire um, the me methods they used specifically to encourage the timely return of high demand items. Uh, the subcommittee's next meeting is scheduled for tomorrow. Um, in March, we discussed that the uniform charge accounts the guidelines set at the state level to standardize the accounting practices of governmental entities was updated last year. The new requirements are set to take effect for organizations with a January to December fiscal year on January 1st of 2022. Upon completion of the 2020 audit, we hired the auditor to create the crosswalk spreadsheet with some of the previous budget lines and what the new budget line should be as of January 1st of 2022 to fit with the new requirements. We have received that spreadsheet and I will be discussing some of the details with the auditor in order to assure that his proposed changes make sense to us. Um, we will implement the new chart of accounts by integrating it into the 2022 budget. Um, on Friday, we had a shared virtual training with the Brandon Township Library in Reader's Advisory focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion presented by Becky Stratford, a Chicago-based librarian who has presented on this topic across the country. It was very informative and received positive feedback from the staff that attended. Having these shared trainings with a neighboring library is a great way to share the cost of popular credentials. So we were glad you were able to do that. How many years in a row have we shared with Brandon? Is this the third one? Um, I believe it is. This was just um, an individual. We shared actually um, all day trainings with them um, two years two years prior to COVID. Okay. Um, and then we've done several sort of one-offs. This is one of those one-off things where we just did, we did, we've done some management training shared with them. Um, and then we did this one. Oh, and we shared our Michigan Library Privacy Act training with them. We both have the same attorney, so we were able to hire the attorney and, and split the cost on that as well, which was very nice for the exact same training. And it saved the attorney some time because she didn't have to do it twice. <laughs> um, I have initiated a project to work with the library's labor attorney to do a full review of all our employee policies. While we have updated quite a few of the policies since the library reestablished in 2012, we have not done a complete review of all of the employee policies to assure everything is in compliance with laws that may have changed. This will be an ongoing project over the coming months. Once we have the initial comp compilation and review of the basic legalities of the policies complete, we will want to form a subcommittee to make a more in-depth look at the various parts of the manual. Good. And since there are any changes we'd like to make. Um, and then in terms of collaboration, the Clarkson Farm and Garden Club's annual garden walk will take place on Wednesday, July 21st. Tickets are on sale at the library for $15 through July 20th. The day of the event, they will be $18. The walk will include six gardens and will begin at the library as they usually do. Excellent. Any comments? Questions? 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 Then let's move to regular business. Let's discuss the audit report. You're up, Neil. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Neil Hammerbacher. I'm a manager with Cambridge and Company. And we were engaged to audit the library for the year of December 31st, 2020. So everyone has a copy of the audit in front of them. And I will make seven or eight comments and I'll open up for questions. Uh, first, on page one, this is the independent auditor's report. Uh, the second paragraph, management's responsibility for the financial statements. So management
commission is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of these financial statements. So they're roughly 35 pages long. We put these statements together as a non-audit surface, but management has to assume control for the financial statements themselves. The auditor's responsibility is to express an opinion on the financial statements that they, uh, the audit was conducted in accordance with the generally accepted auditing standards. And so we give an opinion on the fairness of them. So if you go down to the bottom of page one is the opinion paragraph. In our opinion, the financial statements referred to above presents fairly in all material respects the financial position of the library as of December 31st, 2020. So um, this is an unmodified opinion. If there was something wrong with the report, we have to modify our opinion. So in layman's terms, it's a clean opinion and we should be commended for that. Uh, page four. This is a part of the report called Management's Discussion and Analysis. There's some financial highlights there. I want to talk about the last bullet. At the end of the current fiscal year. I'm sorry, what? Okay. I think it's outside. I think it's outside. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, at the end of the current fiscal year, the unassigned fund balance for the general fund was $1,890,926, or 101% of the general fund's total expenditure. So if you take your unassigned fund balance of your general fund divided by your expenditures, you get this percentage. So years ago, I went to a conference put on by the Department of Treasury. Uh, say things you have a problem with that number is 13% or below. So at 101% you're in good shape there. Okay. Um, pages 11 and 12, as I mentioned, this report is roughly 35 pages long to me. 11 and 12 are mo the most important part of the report. Page 11 is the statement of net position. Tells you at a point in time, December 31st, 2020, uh, what your assets, liabilities, and net position are. So at December 31st, 2020, your total assets were 5971000 Your total liabilities were 103000 uh, your net position was three million seven hundred and forty one thousand. And of that net position you have an under a positive unrestricted net position of one million nine hundred and fifty seven thousand. So that's an important number because if someone says what resources do we have at our disposal to set priorities for, that's the number you look to. Uh, page eleven is called the statement of activities. It tells you what happened in a nutshell for the whole year. So it starts with expenses on the left hand side. The total expenses of the library were one million nine hundred and fifty five thousand. Then there's three categories of revenues that can be specifically identified that would cover an expense. Uh, then you can come to a net expense number of one million nine hundred and forty two thousand five oh eight on the far right hand corner. Then you have some, what they call general purpose revenues, and those include property taxes, uh, money from the state of Michigan, and the interest income. So the ch net change in position was a positive $189,022. So if somebody asks the question, are you better off, worse, worse off, or about the same, you're better off during that year of $189,000. Uh, page 23. So it is a legal requirement uh, for the library to pass a budget uh, for the general fund. Uh, in the middle of the page there, excess of expenditures over appropriations. The library had no expenditures in excess of the amounts appropriated during the year of December 31st, 2020. Uh, so you had no budget exceptions. Uh, so you have to be commended for that. That's for the management control in there. Um, at the end of the report, after page uh, 29, is what we call our 114 letter. And anytime a CPA does an audit for a 
governmental entity, we have to tell the governing body how the audit went and this letter accomplishes that. Uh, so on the bottom of page one, there are difficulties encountered in performing the audit. We encountered no significant difficulties in dealing with management and performing and completing our audits. So Ian did the audit, so he said he had excellent cooperation uh, and help. Um, so I wanted to point that out. I also wanted to point out, out that we did a remote audit. We didn't actually come to the library and look at your records. Um, we use software called ShareFile where we put together a big list and we have you upload documents in there. We also get a backup of your software which we can run a report to or look at the same thing um, you're looking at. Um, so this financial report has to go to the Michigan Department of Treasury who has oversight <laughs> over all governments in the state of Michigan. That has to happen six months after the year end. So it gets uploaded to Treasury, and we doubt that they even look at it. So we have to also submit what's called an APR, Auditing Procedures Report, where they ask the auditor 20 questions. Uh, did they um, set a budget? Did they, uh, does it look like they're free of fraud and mismanagement? So 20 questions that they really want to know about. So when we send this, um, we can answer positively that there are no issues there. So the state will be happy with that. So, uh, that's what I have. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I had a question on page three of that document of your letter. Okay. <laughs> so we were talking about internal controls. Yes. And I know, especially during COVID, a lot of accounting and auditing and so forth were done remotely. Yes. And so you were making some recommendations that we should have more internal control over our pre preparing of our Well, that, that, that kind of alludes to what I talked about. These financial statements are management's responsibility. Yeah. So we, uh, we put it put them together as a non-audit service. So we're pointing out just that fact, that you, know, you could be putting these financial statements together and it makes more sense financially to have the auditors do it because it's an esoteric value of knowledge. You have to pay somebody a decent amount of money to do in those things. So I would say we have over 200 audit clients and I've got the do every single one of the reports. So it's not out of the ordinary Okay. Because I had the same question, the way I read that, it looked like we might be lacking in an in, in internal control. Yeah, you know, I, I don't like that we put that in the report. Okay. So. <laughs> so essentially it's, yeah, it might be great if you could afford to have your own person dedicated to just this, but right. realistically, you can't do that. It, it would not be the, the best financial response to it. Or a small and intermediate size. Right. right. Exactly. Okay. So, you know, we have 12 counties, which are big. We do all their reports. So, you know, county level, they don't make sense. So, uh, can we need to be part of the okay. That would like to hear. That was a question. So, okay. you can tell we actually read your report. Okay. <laughs> all the way to the end? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I was looking specifically for, for that kind of a thing, and I know that always comes at the end, so I skimmed through the first part of the resolution. <laughs> but we thank you because it's important to us that all of the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted, and we're handling taxpayer funds appropriately. Yes. Um, Ian was the, was the field doctor who did um, most of the work on this, and at the end of the audit, as I always do, I had him give me a list of things. Um, and some of them he actually gave us before the end of the audit. We implemented it before we were even done with the audit. There were a couple of things that he, a good example is that um, we have an electronic timesheet system that allows us to approve timesheets. So our timesheets are approved. They're submitted by each employee and then their manager approves them. And then our administrative assistant makes sure that everything is, is appropriately submitted. And then I approve everything. Um, and then we submit payroll for
what we discovered during the audit was that we thought that the software was documenting that over time and that we could run reports, and it doesn't do that. So we are going through this whole process of approval of the payroll, but it doesn't document that that's been done. So now when I print out the report, um, Ian felt that the only thing I really needed to do was sign off on that to, to document officially that I have approved all of those. Um, so now we've already put that into place. And so those are the kinds of little things. He's like, we just need something that shows that you've done that. Right, and that's the kind of thing that, that mm -hmm. can get lost yep. by those of us who are not professional. Yeah. professional. Well, hence the reason for the audit. We, we assumed that it was documenting right. all that. And he said, I need you to print out the report that you did this. And, and we realized that we couldn't do that. That we, every week or every other week we were dutifully doing this whole process, but that it only saves it for three months. It doesn't back, it doesn't save it back any, which is very unusual. And they didn't tell us that when we bought the software. So, and that certainly is the kind of thing that that would easily be missed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because you think you know you know you're approving it. So thank you for that. Thank yeah. you to Ian for catching that and for helping us to fix that. And those are the kinds of things. Yes. So those are the kinds. Of, he gave me a nice long list of things that we can do that are just little things to tweak. Um, that will make, that, make our process we, we appreciate that, mm -hmm. yes, because we're all lay people here, mm -hmm. and so that's very good. As, as every auditor who's done the audit here um, looks at me funny, even Neil did the first audit, uh, it was through your contract, and um, at the end I said to Neil, okay, now let's make a list of all the things you needed to do to approve, and he's like, really? Okay, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> so. Well, we appreciate the input, mm -hmm. yes, because we want to... Not only do we want to keep track of everything, we want to make sure that we're doing it in the most approved, current fashion. Um, I will conclude that Julie has our contact information, so if you have more questions, you can get that information and answer those questions. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very thank much, Neil. Thank you. Have, have, have a good day. drive back. Okay. <laughs> We were easy to work with, except during the presentation when he had to talk over top of Magic Show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the first time we've really had competition. <laughs> it's great to hear them having fun. Yeah, yeah, having a great time. Really having a great time. And in relation to that, let's have our current COVID update. Okay. <laughs> so um, I did give you a handout with the current COVID update, um, but I will go over it um, for the public as well. So the Michigan Occupational Safety and Health Administration, that's my OSHA guidelines, were replaced with the Federal Occupational Safety and Health Administration, that's our OSHA guidelines. Um, and so the main things that are in there are things that we've been doing all along, um, but we will continue to do them. So we are promoting frequent hand washing or hand sanitizer. We're requiring employees experiencing COVID symptoms to stay home. We're maintaining COVID-19 cleaning protocols in accordance with the latest CDC guidelines using EPA-approved disinfectants. Um, we are requiring employees to wear masks except fully vaccinated persons when they cannot consistently maintain six feet of social distance. Um, we are providing non-medical grade face coverings to unvaccinated employees. Um, and we do have posted signage in the work area to remind the employees that are not fully vaccinated to wear face coverings and maintain appropriate distance. So we are within compliance of all of those rules. Um, something that I thought the, the board would find interesting is something that we spoke about at our all staff meeting. Um, the Oakland, um, Oakland County vaccination rate is up to 67%, which is good. The goal is 70%. They wanted to get to 70% by the 4th of July. They didn't quite make it. Um, they have extended their incentive program in hopes of getting people to that 70% point, but they are still working on that. Um, Independence Township, the townships are reported by zip code, and they are reported in ranges. So Independence Township, the 48346, zip code is at the 60 to 69 percent range it's somewhere in there i'm guessing it's probably similar to oakland county in that 67 percent but I, I can't speak to that specifically and then the 48348 is at the 70 to 79 percent it's a little bit higher on the north side of the township than the south side of the township um, we were sort of talking about that and i really think that's because um, there are a lot of children that live on the south side of the township near the schools that's where a lot of the um the uh little subdivisions are with the ranch houses that are near the schools and, and kids can't get vaccinated. So I have a feeling that um, when kids are able to get vaccinated, we'll see those numbers rise and I suspect that, that by the time all is said and done, the township will be fairly even. But that would just be my 
um, my thoughts on it from talking to the health officials and kind of what they were thinking. Um, we are still carefully watching the Delta variant, but health officials are primarily concerned about it in areas with low vaccination rates, and what they consider a low vaccination rate is in the 30 to 50 percent range. So here in Oakland County in Independence Township specifically, we're in pretty good shape. We would like to see it rise a little bit more, but we're getting there. Okay, so in response to the MDHHS lifting restrictions, um, we have begun our transition back to normal. So on June 23rd, the occupancy restrictions in the building were lifted. Um, you'll remember that we were, um, it was at one point below 25%, and then later it was below 50%. We were always well below that 50% range just to make sure everybody felt safe. Um, we had a greeter table in the lobby. Um, we have removed that. The Friends book sale shelves were moved back into the lobby. They had been in the main part of the building. Um, the tables and chairs became available for patron seating. Then on July 1st, um, we went back to standard staff coverage level. Um, you'll remember that we were um, we needed to be at those 50% occupancy levels, so we had to cut the staff numbers down in order to assure that we didn't have too many people in the building. Um, and we are able to go back to that. Um, we now are back to two cash reserve circulation. In order to keep everything down, meaning the number of people in the building and count money and all those kinds, we only had one cash drawer. Um, and we were not doing as much in terms of um, taking in money because, of course, we weren't renting out the room, we were waiting fines, all of those sorts of things. So we are back to two cash drawers. Um, we've eliminated the, sta the staff daily health screening at the entrance um, because we are permitted to do so. Um, the community me meeting room is now available for public rental. Um, and we do have some toys available in the youth area um, with special cleaning protocols. The puppets are still on vacation because we do want to do an inventory and a special cleaning and we want to check the cataloging on all of those. So um, we're thinking in the fall, we don't want to give specific dates, but we're thinking maybe after school gets started. <coughs> and then on July 5th, the Catello alcove became available for public seating and the business center is also now available for public and staff use as well. So we have the ability for meetings there. Um, Any questions about any of that? It's nice to hear. Yeah. yeah. It's, been a, it's been a while. It has been a while. Do you need to do a movement for the audit report? Oh, thank you. Um, did you want to do an, I, I'm sorry, I had put it oh. in the meeting, but I did not think to. Um, yes. That's my fault. Sorry. <laughs> thank you for catching that, Nicole. We'll I'll, back up. Yeah. I'll um, move that we accept the audit report as presented. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded that we accept the audit report as presented. Any other comments or questions about that? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion is carried. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Were there any other questions about our COVID update? No? No. That was like the puppets were on vacation. I thought that was cute. <laughs> we had a, when, when they first went away, we had a sign that said, because they actually went on vacation before the library closed down. Um, and we had a big sign that said that they were on vacation. So, and they're still on vacation. That's the longest vacation ever. Ever lucky. I hope they're having a good time. I think they are. They really are. They're getting into all kinds of mischief, I'm sure. <laughs> And number three, let's discuss the full-time business and marketing library position. Yes, so um, Trevor Wynn, who was our business and marketing librarian, has accepted a position um, at another library. Um, in 2014, the library board approved the creation of the business and marketing librarian position. Since that time, two different librarians have filled the position, each assisting and evolving the position to what it is currently. In the same way that we have librarians that specialize in youth services, having a librarian who specializes in the specific needs of our local business owners has been very valuable. Our business librarian has been an excellent liaison with the local chamber of commerce and has helped to create great relationships with our local business owners who can then provide us with specific feedback about how to serve them more effectively. A dedicated business librarian is something that is more commonly found in larger libraries However, larger communities often home, are often home to um, larger businesses that are more likely to have the staff and the support that they need. In our community, the businesses tend to be smaller and are often owned by local residents. Um, these types of businesses are more likely to benefit from having someone at their local library who can assist them with resources on business planning, finance, marketing, social media, etc. 
Clarkston is known for being a great community to live, work, and play, so this type of support is one more way the library can contribute to the community's success. So with the recent departure of Trevor Wynn, we are requesting permission to post for a full-time business and marketing librarian. Trevor will definitely be missed, um, but he left us in a good position to bring in someone new to continue the success of the partnerships and collaborations that he built. Um, this is actually a budgeted position, so um, nothing would need to change in the budget. Yeah. Okay. Any questions or comments about that? It's good. He was really good. I'm sorry to mm -hmm. see him leave. Yeah. Yeah. He took yeah. a position that's only 10 minutes from his house. <laughs> I, well, I don't blame him. Yeah. I don't blame, I don't blame him. him. One minute, but he, no. is, he was very well received. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the community liked him. Mm -hmm. Very hard working. So every everyone has moved our uh, services further. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what we want to see. Mm -hmm. So now we have to look for someone to continue exactly. that and to work with our local business people. So I will accept a motion to approve marketing this position. I'll make a motion to approve the posting of a full-time business and marketing librarian as presented. Second. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the posting for the full-time business and marketing library position as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion is carried. How soon do you think this can occur? We will probably post it tomorrow. Um, the selection committee um, Interestingly, so our selection committee is usually um, for this position, it would be our head of adult, this position reports to the head of adult services, so obviously our head of adult services and myself. Um, when we hire the community relations volunteer coordinator, we have Trevor, we had the business librarian sit in on that because of course those two work very closely together. So now Christy Phillips, who is our new community relations volunteer coordinator, will sit in on hiring somebody who <laughs> Yes. So yeah, and then we'll need a board member as well. Okay. And that position's usually, how long do you think it'll be open? Two weeks? We're three. looking at a timeline. Um, I would think maybe two to three weeks. We'd like to get it filled relatively quickly. Um, there are a lot of positions posted. This one is particularly unique. Um, so that I don't know that it needs to be posted for a long time um, to find somebody necessarily. I mean, people are either going to be really interested in it or they're, it's not. It will be their cup of tea or not. Exactly. We are looking, we will be looking for somebody who's got that specific skill set of those business um, business databases and, and that kind of thing. So market research and that sort of thing. So, so it's not likely to necessarily get the overwhelming number of applications that a more general Probably position. not. It, it, does, it hasn't in the past. It's a, it's a very unique position. Those people who do specialize in this um, may very well be interested, um, but then again, they, they may be happy where they are, so who knows. Um, we do have a competitive salary, though, um, and we had a fair turnout for it when we posted it the last time. And um, that's a good sign. Trevor, we brought from, um, I believe he was previously employed at Genesee District Library, so he came from a, from a bit of a distance, this position. So. Okay, excellent. Very nice work tonight. Yeah. I will yeah. accept a motion for adjournment. I second. Allison and Nancy. Any questions or comments? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion hasn't. We will adjourn at 7.07. .07. Very good.